So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about uh, an effort that we're that we're working on in PL uh, for funding private retrieval. This this sort of uh, is is a, a next step or a more action oriented uh, thing that comes out of a lot of the motivation that we got from Juan uh, earlier today. Uh, so in terms of context, um, there have been a, a couple uh, events over the last year around funding the commons, uh, and this came out of PLV8 as we talked about. You know, how do we help and, and drive this innovation chasm of getting more good ideas into production faster? Uh, and, and in particular, uh, the one, uh, one of the blue funds that's sort of becoming a reality is, is in this space of private content routing and retrieval, which is how, how do we uh, encourage more mechanisms and more possibilities that we can use for, for getting to where we want to be. Uh, with private access to content address data. Um, I'm going to keep this context fairly short because we just got sort of the, the, the actual like definition out of, out of Juan uh, in his talk about why this is such an important proper like thing that we need to be focused on. Um, but, but logistically, this is um, within sort of the PL context going to be one of, one of the blue funds uh, thinking about broadly the, this question of private private data retrieval with a specific interest in content address data, um, and so what does what does that mean? Um, we we put together a hypothesis uh, or, or sort of an investment thesis of why this makes a, a good blue fund, and essentially boiling this down to to the one sentence version, we think that an increased diversity of mechanisms and a focused effort on private communication is going to give us better options, in particular on reader privacy. Um, and so we got that definition from Juan, uh, and I'll I'll dive into uh, specifically what that as actually meaning. Um, right now, when we look at what our options are for sort of private access to data, the focus has not been on content address data, right? The focus for for low latency communication and access to privacy, there's some on messaging, but mostly it's web. Right, and it's it's the web to web of like a single origin where to get stuff I need to go to that origin who's the authority who's got the certificate, and so in that focus you end up with things like onion routing and mixed nets, um, which a, as the only things that have really scaled or have any production use because they're they're tunneling a real time traffic back to this origin they need to get the TLS to keep working in order to get sort of that end to end property. Um, we, we see sort of like this, you know, the, there's some success here, right? Like Tor has, has 3 million users, like that, that's not nothing, but it's not the whole web uh, by a long shot. Um, centralized things like Signal have an order of magnitude more for, for just end-to-end -end encryption. Um, when you look at getting into some of this metadata level, um, which is what onion routing is trying to do, the, the Signal-like world is pushing stuff into an SGX container, right? That's how it's doing address book matching. That's how it's doing uh, attempts at some of the protection of the social network graph, um, which is like great as an abstraction, right? Like let's, let's have this enclave, like maybe we can get to fully homomorphic encryption instead of SGX, where instead of trusting Intel, we're trusting some crypto, that would be great. And, and the nice thing about SGX is it is a very similar abstraction that there's the, the potential for crypto to come in and say, actually, we can do this in a, in a, in a better way. Um, I think one, one of the you know, interesting things is, is there have been some attempts, things like Freenet, that, that proactively push content uh, in caching. They've had a lot of liability type issues of that that is scary. Um, but, but that's really like the only thing that's like a release piece of software you could download and use that's doing something other than this onion routing. Um, and that's an interesting place that we've ended up. Um, okay, so 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 the so that's the we need more diversity, right? Like, um, and and so we can say that mixed nets are probably not going to solve our problem, like long term. Which is the the balance that a mixed net is giving you is like we can trade off like latency through additional hops. Like we we're laundering our connection through a bunch of nodes as a way to delink, and and so. That structure is just inherently a more latency versus privacy, and and that's not going to let us compete with CDNs. Um, like if, if we're trying to do content routing in ten milliseconds, uh, a mixnet is going to be pretty tough as as the answer to that. Um, and 
we're also not taking advantage of content addressability in them right now, right? Like we've got this great property that our data is self-certifying, that there isn't a single origin that you have to go back to. We should think about what the equivalent design is. Like we should be able to do quite a bit better in how we would delink, given that there are a bunch of copies of this content and that we don't need to go to a specific origin. Um, and we're not thinking about, like we, we haven't thought about how you would take a mixnet and either do source routing that understands that there's a bunch of places or that the, the routers or the exit could potentially find the copy closest to it. It's still going back to the single origin. Um, so we haven't, we haven't you know, th there is stuff to do for how do you do better with, with content address data and mixnets. Um, but even then it's, it's unclear that's like the right answer for especially content routing, if not data transfer. Um, and then also we know that there are other academic approaches and we just don't have prototypes and we haven't developed them to a level where they seem applicable today or, or something that we would consider implementing. Um, we know that, that there are other agencies that see this problem in various aspects and, and also see this as like worth investing in. There's, there's a big grand challenge from DARPA uh, around fully homomorphic encryption that is spending tens of millions on trying to get that within a factor of 10 or two, like, it, like they're, 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 they've identified a bunch of orders of magnitude of speed improvement that they think they can get through a pretty stack integrated approach of like ASIC design plus crypto improvements plus et cetera, um, that they're just investing across that whole stack and think they can really speed up uh, what's possible with FHE. Um, you've got things around PIR that have gotten to tens of millions or like roughly what hardware is capable of. Um, and that has sort of um, continued to expand, but there hasn't really been a focus there on, on can you uh, make use of sort of more expensive hardware to, to continue scaling that? Where do the, the limits uh, actually end up as you try and productionize that? Um, and, and then we're seeing across uh, you know, zero knowledge and across a bunch of these things that this, uh, the primitives that we have are actually advancing pretty quickly. Um, like there've been several new bloom filter constructions in the last couple years like that, like all of these different, both uh, statistical and cryptographic data structures are like moving pretty fast. Um, so we have other options than sacrificing latency for privacy and we should be investigating those. Um, so what is the mechanics? The, the fund is focused on five years out as sort of like the goal, which is like the, the, the goal is not like, let's make content routing in IPFS be more private next year. Like we don't like, like there's a bunch of stuff that PL is doing directly. That's going to be focusing on a bunch of those properties. Like let's add these incremental improvements because those are interesting and solve the problems today. But we also need to be thinking about like what, what gets us to a good place in five years. And that is the investment earlier towards basic research, towards like academic groups, thinking about novel things and thinking about how do we take ideas that seem promising from papers and move them to the prototype phase to gain confidence that they maybe could work at scale. Um, so that's going to be earlier stage stuff. It's going to be then outreach to those communities to let them know that, they, that we think this is a problem. And in particular, that shifting to also thinking about content address data is worth their time. Um, that, that gets there to be more focus and more work there. And then coordinating with, with the existing funders as well to, to sort of, you know, express why this is an important focus. Where are we now? Um, there is an open problem statement that we're beginning to put on PL research. Um, we are expecting um, to fund five plus academic things and probably three plus like prototype implementation things each year. Um, and yeah, um, so what's in scope? We've got sort of a set of examples on the academic side of previous work that we think would be the right sort of thing that, that is, you know, so this is like the retroactive, like if we were doing this five years ago or 10 years ago, what would we be, you know, what would have been the great like home runs of like, yeah, that's cool. That was a new mechanism um, because then we can sort of say, hey, if you're doing something that you think is like meant to, to be in the same line, these are the sorts of things. And so some examples here. Um, you know, things like Express is injecting noise. There's the whole line of like, can we have the real requests be indistinguishable from a set of sort of noisy uh, re requests or at least statistically? Um, Express, Vuvuzela, et cetera. Um, we've got a set of um, PIR type things 
um, that, ha that have been used. So this is, um, I want to get an item out of a database without the server knowing which item. There's both computational things, uh, some of which use fully homomorphic style uh, constructions. And then there's also information theoretic where you're using multiple servers uh, and you're saying they don't collude. Um, that one still has some latency slash some like overhead because if both of those servers are in the database next to you, uh, it's harder to argue that they might not collude or that someone can't go to that data center and get both of them. Um, there's a bunch of ORAM and like oblivious access stuff that, that potentially, again, helps sort of spread out and make it harder to, to understand what was accessed. Uh, although, again, has potentially some like communication throughput uh, uh, trade-offs. Uh, and then, and then there, there's sort of like a bunch of these like direct in crypto, like how do I make queries that are hard for the evaluator to understand? Um, these are all like interesting and this is what has happened. So hopefully the stuff that happens in the next decade is more interesting, right? Um, and, and broader. Um, on the implementation side, uh, there's sort of the, um, I, I guess I have less of like the, the, this list of like, what, what are implementations that we would have funded if we were doing this 10 years ago? Like you, you might point to like things like Signal, but that seems probably too far along. Um, so instead it's, we, we, we sort of had, what, what are things that like, we think we could be doing that would be interesting? One of the examples is, could we partner with NIM and have NIM be content aware? Like let's get NIM exits to understand IPFS. That, that seems like an interesting place to start looking at researching uh, not going to a single origin, but saying, hey, we, we already have browsers understanding this IPFS URL format. Why not have the exits also understand it? There's probably something about getting uh, the TLS to work with that, which is right now, because the, uh, the requester is probably going to TLS before they push it into a mixnet, the exit just sees the TLS wrapper and doesn't realize it's an IPFS URL. So there's going to be some trickiness to figure out how do you just not protect it, but then you're leaking the CID uh, so there's there's some interactions there, but it gives us a playground that's all, that's going to be at scale where we can start to understand the right caching and and the right way to speed this up as much as you can. Um, another example is is taking some of the um, messaging systems that are being made right now over you know onion services or mixnets and and asking them what is the right network layer uh, that you would actually want to use. A lot of them have expressed that, that they don't actually see the onion routing as necessarily the right cryptographic answer for them. Um, and so if you look at um, Lizard or Switch, there, there's these sets of, or Ricochet, it's this set of like anonymous messaging that, that each user is a Tor onion service. And then they end up doing these interesting cryptographic uh, constructions for how they can allow offline or store and forward on top of that. Um, which is interesting, but then it's not the right one, and they also realize that it's not the right one. Um, and so those groups that are building that are interested in exploring other options for what, the, what that network level construction is. Uh, and so that's, that's something that would be in the implementation level to give them, uh, as practitioners, the ability to, to innovate. Um, cool. Uh, we've got and are continuing to assemble uh, an advisory committee. Uh, and so the basic structure is proposals go in uh, to an RFP area. Um, so this external one um, is, is sort of a, a set, uh, trying to keep this fairly broad and not just our current PL advisors, um, but, but we'll, we'll continue to expand this. Um, it's meant to be a lightweight review process from this external committee. And then internally, uh, me and I think Giannis are uh, going to be doing the sort of initial filter and review of inbound proposals. Um, there is a link to the PL research blog that has the open problem statement that will uh, evolve with links to the RFP and places to submit as that comes on, but already has sort of this basic problem. Uh, if you have things you think are um, in scope that you think we should be following up on, uh, that you think are exciting mechanisms that we shouldn't be forgetting, uh, if you want to modify this pitch, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, uh, we're, we're in network goods. Um, and we are on Slack and so forth. So uh, happy to take questions and thank you. Yeah. Maybe a question for, for the group. Um, is anybody working on or know groups um, who could have
have good pro um, projects for this, and um, maybe a question of like, what recommendations would you have in terms of getting the word out to those groups? So we're gonna try and reach out to, so PETS is happening this week. Uh, it's theoretically in Australia, but mostly virtual. Um, and then in August is FOCI, the free and open communication workshop. Um, or I think, it, I think they're doing hot FOCI in August and then the real FOCI will be later in the fall. So we'll reach out, we think those are probably relevant academic groups. And then I'll also be giving this talk, but with expanded context, uh, since Juan won't be there uh, at ETCC next week. Um, and then we'll, we'll be trying to hit some of these practitioner groups as well. So that's, that's the current outreach plan, but there's always more to do. Are those listed of like those two events you just mentioned on adopt or would you use something similar? There's a notion, but uh, I think I think we could probably do more on in terms of public. Probably linking on that blog post is is what is the public facing thing right now. That that's like the the link that is a QR code and probably then the right place. Um, yeah. Have we thought about sort of like maintaining a listing of open problems and some maybe integrating community input into how to rank those or something like that? Mm. So if we assemble a um, description of very concrete open problems and then having some some way of kind of gathering insight into what are the ones to solve. Yeah, so so we've got um, this open problem linked uh, already uh, as as a as an issue, and and are happy to um, let's see where did it end up. So so here's here's sort of this draft of the of the private retrieval open problem, and so then we're happy to take PRs and issues and so forth as as continued refinement of that. It's it's meant to be a living document. Um, the, the current thought there. Cool. Thank you for doing this. Yeah.